<laughs> it's the world of death. Welcome back to Automotive Anatomy. Today we have an amazing guest. How are you today, senor? I'm pretty good. Yourself? I'm doing amazing, man. Thank you so much for bringing out this amazing truck, which I've been following for a bit now. Uh, but before we get into the story about it, first and foremost, what year is it and what is it? So this is a 1987 Toyota pickup. It's a RN50 chassis. And, well, I don't know if it's a pickup anymore. I was going to say, it was. Yeah. And our, you know, but but we'll, we'll get into it because you've done so many cool things to it uh tell us about yourself man like when do you remember thinking like hey i like cars this is what i kind of want to pursue this is my my passion shit i mean honestly i don't even remember mm -hmm. all i remember is being i don't know six seven years old maybe eight my parents taking us to tijuana and i would see the little hot wheels and I was like, oh, I want the cars, I want the cars. Mm. So go to a Walmart, oh, I want the Hot Wheels, I want the Hot Wheels. So as a little kid, I've always been into cars. Yeah. What ends up happening, uh, what, what becomes your first car? This one, but in a 1985 Toyota pickup oh, and okay. a X-Cab. Unfortunately, okay. that, that got taken away. Yeah, we won't ask why, but uh, <laughs> X-Cab, so that's the, the mid little cab in the back, right? It's not yeah, fully... so you have the little window in the back of the B pillar. Mm -hmm. So you've always been through mini trucks or? Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Okay. I don't know, I'm just attracted to, to one, Toyota, but two, it's just, I don't know, something about little trucks, mm -hmm. I, have a, I have a strong love for it. You're not the only one, bro. Like all of us love it. I mean, I love the 620, the Datsuns, all that good stuff, man. So yeah, I, I completely understand uh, the passion for them. Okay. So as we move forward now, how do we stumble upon this specific truck? Where did you find it? I found it in Orange County. <laughs> so the reason we're laughing <laughs> I'm gonna tell this story bro the reason we're laughing is because he's like hey man where you coming from and I told him the city and then he tells me a complete different county oh so you're close to there no no it's a whole different city it's like me saying I'm from San Diego oh okay you're from LA then <laughs> I was a little off by a couple miles <laughs> a couple counties bro not even <laughs> but uh so you buy an Orange County are you sure it's an Orange County yeah it was Maybe Orange it was, County it was Valley you think that was Orange County nah, that's it what was, it is it was Santa Ana actually <laughs> oh, there you go. Okay, it's okay. It is Orange County. So you bought in Santana, okay? Yeah, um, I found it on uh, Santa Ana. I found it for a thousand bucks. Well, how long ago was technic this? technically, it was for twenty five, twenty seven hundred bucks. Freaking low baller, dude. But, <laughs> dude, this truck. There was so many things wrong with it. The where these trucks never came with airbags, but where the airbag was supposed to go, it was like a hockey puck that was drilled into it. <laughs> <laughs> like with wood screws, those air horns from like O'Reilly's everywhere. Like it was a total mess. Besides that, I popped the hood, oil leaks. I mean, these are notorious for oil leaks. Are they? The, the front main seal okay. and the tranny rear seal. So, I mean, oil leaks everywhere. So, I mean, well, twenty five hundred, bro. <laughs> twenty five hundred, but I mean, this was twenty fifteen. Okay. And uh, well, I don't know. Us being us. We will want a low bar if you're gonna go buy something. Especially if it's in that poor condition, yeah. Yeah, and then, I mean, I get it. They're older, they're supposed to go up in value. I mean, they are now, but. Are they? They that's did. A, that's a lie, that's a they lie. They did. No, 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 no. The fact that old cars are supposed to go up in value, that's a lie that we car guys are doing to ourselves. Yeah. But no, dude, like, <laughs> no one should be buying an $8,000 truck that nah. leaks oil, you know? But we still do, and that's, that's our fault. But <laughs> it's kind of like a sad story behind it, because I didn't know at the time, mm -hmm. but I mean, 2500 2700 I went to go see it at the time. I was the president of a mini truck club okay. called Mini Machine. So me and the club went out there. We went to go um, inspect it and not intimidating at all. Like 20 trucks showing up <laughs> to show one truck. You're like, OK, nah, it was, it was like, actually bro, five trucks. <laughs> at 9 p.m. on a Friday. You're right. Not intimidating. At uh, all. <laughs> but 
We started talking numbers. I started pointing stuff out, especially being a technician at that time. I started pointing a lot of stuff out. <laughs> and well, stuff out. he told me at that point we got down to 1300. I was like, I'll give you a grand, like most. And he's like, you know what? Screw it. I need the money. He never told me that. So I was like, OK, that was hit number one. I'm like, I should have probably not said anything. And then after we, fin uh, we signed the paperwork, I was warming up the truck to go home. He's my dad. He was with me, too. And he asked, like, oh, so because I never asked. I just wanted the damn truck. My dad was like, oh, so why are you getting rid of the truck? And he's like, oh, well, my wife got deported to the Philippines. So oh, I needed the money to go shit. see her. I'm like, I'm in the car seat. I'm like, I, if he would have said that or put it in the story, I would have never lowballed him. I would have just gave him the full amount. I would have still lowball him, but feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel bad on the way. <laughs> so the question is, okay, let's see, let's let's test this hypothesis, right? So what did you do? Did you give on the twenty five hundred? No, you got you. I had you to, turn on to car, register, you left. fix everything. <laughs> the guys in the Philippines watching this video right now, looking that dude freaking lowball me, even though he told my sad story. Yep. Now I get you. No, but you know, in all, in all reality, the thing is. Um, yeah, it is a, it's a sad story, but at the same time, you're buying a truck that you know you're going to have to put money into, and therefore, you have to minimize your entry point, and 2500 it's already... And I mean, at that time, I was uh, part-time for Toyota, so it's like I was barely stepping my foot You're still justifying, it. bro. You're a horrible so person. Like... <laughs> Just... <laughs> <laughs> Like, I'm always here. It Even definitely at, is stiff, for sure. <laughs> oh, I mean, I gotta have it stiff for the... For, for the drifting, at least. Man, the clutch is super aggressive, huh? It's bitey, I can feel yeah. it. What kind of clutch did you say? It's a Clutchmaster 725 series. Okay. It's a twin disc clutch. Gotcha. going that fast that's cool that's awesome dude he went quiet mode so that means he's focusing <laughs> i don't know if i should be afraid or oh, now you're good. look for something to handle because that's cool hope i don't end up in your lap <laughs> <laughs> say less <laughs> now usually when i go in quiet mode it's it's not because I'm looking like for cops or nothing or trying to like stay focused on my driving. It's more of where's the pajo? Uh, <laughs> smart man. Sounds so nice. Thank you. Sounds so good dude. Surprisingly, my nephew told me, he was like, it sounds really loud, even from the outside. I was in my car uh -huh. with windows up and I could still hear the turbo. I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a lot of space where all those noises can come out from. Yeah. <laughs> It's okay. <laughs> oh, I think. Damn. <laughs> so, eight years in the making. You said 2015, correct? Yeah. Okay, cool. December 15, 2015 is when the day I purchased it. For whatever reason, we forget a lot of different things, but we just don't forget those, th you know, yep. key things. My girl even made me a sweater with the date on the back, so. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Shout out to your girl for being supportive. Okay. So, the, the color, let's start with the color. I love the patina on it. Is this an OEM color? Yeah, it's an OEM color. It's mm -hmm. a, um, I'm not sure from what year to what year they made it, mm -hmm. but it's a, I believe it's a B3N or B3R. Um, that's the code color, but it's mm -hmm. a Toyota wine red. Oh, okay, wine red is the, I guess, the name. It's supposed to be a lot more shiny, more, a lot more glamorous, <laughs> but. Really? <laughs> <laughs> it's not like matte. <laughs> 
<laughs> what I would have noticed. Nah, it's cool. But I mean, dude, after eight, it's an 80s, right? So that's, I keep thinking the 90s were like 10 years ago, but that's 80s or what? Oh, damn. It's how they say the, the new generation kids, the Honda Civics are now their 40, 1940s, 1950s. Bro, cars, so it's like, I guess got you. you know? Damn, I'm almost 30. <laughs> I it <know>. hurts. <laughs> I know. It's like the 80s. It's 20, 43 years. Like it just doesn't, yeah. it doesn't calculate so, my head. And a different standpoint to make it a little bit easier. R240 <laughs> was the 240. The new generation, their 240 is the 2013 FRS. That's Think weird. About it. Okay, let's stop. Let's stop because it's <laughs> making me feel even older than I am. But, you know, I'm glad we were in the, the generation that we're in, you know? Okay, so so the front end, what have we done to it? Uh, everything. <laughs> I did my own uh, hood vents. Nice. Uh, I put AeroCatch uh, latches on them mm -hmm. with steel pins. I did a Toyota V6 front end. The bumper already came with it. Okay. But I added the 4x4 Valance, the V6 grill. Mm -hmm. And um, I added my own my own TRD uh, badge that is LED. Um, you mentioned you like putting lights into everything. So. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, the headlights, well, I got them sponsored from my last truck in 2013. And the company's called Depper Lighting. And ever okay. since then, they supported the truck. And That's cool. Yeah. Nice. Besides that, just the 4x4 fenders. They were originally two-wheel drive, but... I flared them out about six to seven inches to the point where I broke all the brackets. I had to zip tie them <laughs> at the bottom. So I saw one of my homeboys uh, have the four by four fenders on TikTok. I'm like, you know what? Let's give it a try. And um, this last, this past Christmas, my dad was like, you know what? Um, I'll get them for you. Oh, that's nice. So I was like, you know what? Let's rock them. Is your dad into modifying cars as well or no? No, he was actually against it when I, because the first <laughs> truck. So long story short, on my first car, my dad offered me either the Corolla or uh, Sion XB or MR2. He had that 85 to the pick of my first truck. Oh. I never asked him, can I have it? I just took it from him. That's smart. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but um, when I first started modifying that one, uh, he got like extremely, extremely mad. But once he started slowly, slowly seeing that this was my passion, I wasn't into sports. Like to this day, I'm still not into sports. You can say whatever you want. I don't know what you're talking about when it comes down to sports. Um, <laughs> hey, did you know that uh, Lionel Messi joined the Lakers? Yeah, I mean, Mexico, <laughs> Mexico is going to the, the, what is it, the... The World Cup? Yeah. And winning it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, you don't need to know sports to you know that they suck. Yeah. I love Mexico. Talk to me know? about cars, and I know everything about uh, okay, it. Okay, go, go. That's funny. Uh, okay. Yeah, so that's why I asked you. I mean, uh, we interviewed another gentleman before with the fenders, and they, it looks so cool because they're already widened a little bit, but they're just a four by four. So I actually not, had to widen them another. And then you inch widen and a half. up even more, which is <laughs> the, the wild thing. That's, that's what I kind of noticed. I'm like, damn, dude. Wow. And then the, the rear, what, 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 uh, what kind of flares? So they're from a company called uh, Lemon Hill Avenue. They're only on eBay, they're a uh, at home business that they make homemade flares. Oh, like a mom and pop. Yeah. Oh, that's cool, man. And they're they're uh, metal, right? Yeah, they're metal. Oh, that's cool. Um, they, don't any, they don't have any holes. They're supposed to be uh, TIG welded on the outside. But what I did was I drilled holes near the seam and just spot welded them on. Make it look cleaner. Yeah. Sass. I love that, dude. That's cool. That's attention to detail. You could have just done the outside. You're like, no. And, I, and you welded it yourself? Yeah, everything on this truck I did myself. The only two things I didn't do myself was the engine harness and um, the window tent. I can't show what have you done, what are the upgrades, and then braking system. Uh, it's going to be a long list. That's okay. <laughs> so I designed my mm -hmm. own upper tubular control arms with mm -hmm. the company SAE Speed which I am designing more products for these trucks. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a custom upper tubular arm. It is shortened by a quarter inch just to give you that natural camber that a lot of the uh, drifters want. But I'm into the drifting scene. That's, what I, that's the whole purpose uh -huh. of this truck. But there is another purpose towards it. But um, I like to just fabricate, design, just stuff that other people could use. Right. Um, so lower control arms, they're from a 1992 Toyota pickup. Okay. The reason I didn't use this generation is because they're a little bit more flimsy. 
mm. their the newer updated version are actually boxed and oh, okay. uh so they're a lot stronger to handle the the smacks when flying off track when i go to apple valley speedway gotcha 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 um and if i ever hit a curve well you know that story yeah yeah <laughs> but the coilovers are from sae speed also i just welded my own uh, so the mounts for those coilovers are actually uh four inch four eight inch uh coilover brackets for the four links all i did was flip it 180 degrees welded it upside down and just that was it that <laughs> the rear end is a uh nissan 240sx uh subframe oh okay um i also have sae speed coilovers on it and i have voodoo 13 control arms for everything the suspension is a cantilever suspension the braking system in the front and the rear they're both not complete but the whole rear end it's a 300 zx dual caliper setup that uses literally everything braking system wise for z32s so cool by the way thank you um the front it's Z32 calipers. So this is the tricky part. Mm. This where all the information has to stay stuck or you got to write it down. <laughs> you can't just go to AutoZone and say, I need this for this truck. <laughs> yeah, so. Gotcha. The calipers are 300ZX, the 30 millimeters. Okay. Um, I made a, I believe, half inch spacer to have them <clears throat> physically in the middle of the rotor. That's an issue, yep. Uh -huh. The rotor is a 1994 Mazda MPV. The caliper uh brake pads they're 1994 toyota foreigner 4x4s that, it's, a, it's a lot of information but that's a weird yeah yeah but that was the only way to make because a lot of people say you can't fit z32 calipers inside of 15 inch wheels i said nah we're gonna make it fit <laughs> so mm. i literally tried my best to make them fit and the front no issues the only thing was just spacing so i had to add a 20 mil spacer to make the wheels Clear the, yeah, clear the caliper. Uh -huh. So this is a, you could, a lot of people will say it's a small braking system, but it's a BBK for a 15 inch wheel. A thousand percent, a thousand percent. And for um, this truck, you know, in essence, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so the back end, I did have troubles. Uh, I'm not sure if it was the design of the wheel or just if they were too bulky, but I had to grind down maybe a quarter inch off the, a quarter inch or an eighth of an inch off the calipers to make them fit. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Uh, and then the brake lines in the front are SW20 MR2 <laughs> that are both on. <laughs> wow, that's yeah. funny. And then I had my homeboy Tommy. Uh, we have Beltec drop spindles, but we shorten them an inch or inch and a half to have as much angle as possible. I mean, the fact that it's super uh, modified, it still feels comfortable. Yeah. Gay Franco in uh, San Diego ripping it or Mexico. They're close. Yeah, they're Mexico, actually close to Mexico. Mexico. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny because he hangs out with my buddy Nestor and um, the, the freeway signs just look so Americanized, but it's Mexico. <laughs> I mean, that's that's what I'd be doing. That's how I'm learning. <laughs> I love it. Uh, since we're in the back, uh, clear tail lights. I mean, did you do those yourself or what? So, clear tail lights, I made them myself. Oh, um, nice. okay. They're the original housings in the back, <clears throat> but the front lens and it's only the lens i've actually made a tutorial on youtube on how to make them because mm -hmm. everybody's always asking me these are what a lot of people either call altezza lights or socal people we call them the paisa lights hey it's <laughs> paisa for life <laughs> it's uh it's where you have the whole inside it's the housing is chrome and you have just have a single spotlight of red i dig it so what i did was i just took the clear lens off of that put it on there but what I also did was I riv nut the bed so I could use Allen keys to make it nice and flush. Wow. So tail lights, that's it. it just LEDs, um, tailgate, still factory. The diffuser I made myself, it's from a material called ACM. 
and I got that from OMG Miata. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, because he was using that same material to mm -hmm. build his Porsche, his Miata, but obviously he knows what he's doing. Yeah. I was still learning with the material. I'm still mm -hmm. learning what to do. So uh, it doesn't look clean, but at the same time, I've either hit stuff or just, I mean, this one just completely flew off on the freeway. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> so. there's no need to justify. Like we know, especially when you drive your car. Uh, yeah. And I've seen this car being sideways, which that's actually how I found the truck. Uh, the fact that it was sideways and we love mini trucks and you put those two and two, you know, especially when you, uh, at least for me, my passion is when I see cars that are not supposed to be doing what you're looking at them, you know, yeah. so if they, if they get like a wagon out there and they're sliding it, uh, to me, that's freaking cool, you know, so that's how I found your truck, man, through the, the sliding in the Apple Valley, and I was like, man, that thing is rad, and then, you know, I saw some some clips of your on your engine, man, I was like, whoa, this is super <laughs> cool, but um, exhaust system, what do you have since we're in the back? So exhaust system, it's a three inch all the way back, the metal is a oval piping, just to clear the cross member. Um, I have, it's all uh, T304 stainless. Uh, I have two high flow mufflers from Vibrant. And then dual, um, I think they're two and a half or two inch uh, blast pipes off of eBay. Okay, cool. Very simple, nice. Um, just for those wondering, because I get a lot of mini truck people wondering. This is a tonneau cover off of a nine. Um, damn, I don't remember the year, but it's Lies, a. Lies, he doesn't want to say his secrets. <laughs> and you'll keep asking. <laughs> but this is a Chevy S10 tonneau cover, and it's a. It's from a company called Checkmate. The Checkmate. company was from the 80s, I think early 90s, and mm -hmm. then they went out of business. So oh. th this tonneau cover you can't get anymore. Um, maybe in three, four years, I plan on getting rid of it, only because I want to make a lightweight. Uh, I want dibs, bro. Airing <laughs> rates. In the four, I mean, in the front, I have 450 spring rate. So I have American coilovers, you could say. Uh -huh. So they go off of pounds, not, I think it's K's. KG, yeah. Yeah, so I don't know what it so is. That's why it sounds so much like softer, but they're not. Yeah. Gotcha. So. In the front, the 450 uh, pound spring rates, and the rear, it's 350. I'm actually surprised that there's no like smells, you know? Like I would need a cooling <laughs> smell, there's oil, there's, no? Yeah, so I take my time. I mean, being a mechanic too, it's like, I can't have my stuff leaking. Like people are gonna think wrong of me. <laughs> so you are a good mechanic. You're not like the mechanic that has the car all messed up, but you know. Yeah, so I'm always looking after it. If there's any leaks, I go after it as mm -hmm. soon as possible or as soon as I can. Right. Uh, a lot of people might not know this, but they won't. I go into the law a lot. Like, I want to know what's legal. What's, I mean, nothing here is, is legal. Not, this is not a lawyer but I want to. I want to know the laws to be prepared. The tail lights, these, these are actually illegal. The clear ones, right? Yeah, 100% clear, it's illegal. By California state law, you got to have at least like a quarter inch strip of reflective tape. If you don't have reflective tape, you got to have something red. Right. But yeah, the good like thing it. is that we're in Kansas and we're not in California, <laughs> so we're not we're not spilling it out. Let's talk about the interior before we start uh, naming the things that are wrong with our cars, bro. <laughs> let's, let's see what we got going on. Illegal, illegal, illegal. There's a, there's not a steering wheel. Uh, anyways, um, we're in, I think we're in New York, right? No, no, in, in Texas. We're in, we're in Texas. We're in Mexico as of right now. Uh, okay, <laughs> that that's uh, that's little Tokyo. <laughs> Bro, you gotta think of a, <laughs> no, this is the El Golfo de Mexico. We're in the, on the Chihuahua side of Mexico, bro. Come on, <laughs> damn. All right, so let's talk about the interior, man. This is so super cool. All right, so the only thing stuck here is literally <laughs> just the floor plans and the pedals. That's literally it. And knowing you, that's probably not gonna be it for for the long run. Honestly, I want the the tilting pedals. I really do want them. Hey, I'm sure you're gonna make it happen. Let's start with the door card and then let's make our way. What is this? So the door cards are when I first started wanting to experiment. Mm -hmm. uh, I was still new to this 
I wanted to get rid of the old crusty ones. They had holes. Mm -hmm. And then besides that, they, I don't know, they made a huge hole for a speaker. I'm not a fan of it. Mm -hmm. So the material is just ABS, but at the time I didn't have the money. I just bought what I can. Mm -hmm. And well, I bought it too skinny, too thin. So in the heat, they actually flexed. Like it flexes oh, okay. here and there, but I would want to replace them with the ACM material that I have in the back. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah. Cup holders, there's none. So I bought Marine Walden cup holders and now I have that. So I put magnets so I could hold. That's and, smart right and there. You got the McDonald's extra large cup right there. Oh boy, thought of everything, huh? <laughs> Damn. I, mean, I, I daily drive this here and there and then I literally drive everywhere, so. What do you mean you daily drive it here and there? That's not a daily driver, bro. Oh, no. <laughs> I daily drive here and there on the weekends. I daily, no, okay. Month. The reason I say that is because I love to daily drive this, uh -huh. but when it breaks down, obviously I can't drive it. And really? the thing is- This would break down? <laughs> I, I, I don't know why, dude. It looks so like, it looks just stock. I'm not a professional. I love to make my own shit. And well, daily driving this, I mean, it's cool, but I mean, daily driving a drift car, it, especially with the Volta diff, you tend to slide here and there. Trust, man. You're, speaking, you're <laughs> preaching to the choir. I get it. I get it. Don't, don't even worry about it. The seats, what do you got going on? Uh, NRG, mm -hmm. the medium seats or large seats, I forgot. But uh, sooner or later, I got to replace them. The cushion is gone. Mm -hmm. uh, the seat mounts, they're from Carbrua. I'm not sure if I say them right. Mm -hmm. But I did modify them to sit as low as possible. Mm. I would love to sit a little bit more back, but because I do drifting, I had to do a welded harness bar. Oh, so nice. it doesn't really let me go a little bit back. Gotcha, okay. Uh, race equip, uh, economical harness, which is track approved. Mm. Uh, Sorry, there it is. Yep. <clears throat> All right, uh, shifting assembly. So I have, the transmission is a J160. I have a DND shifter that's weighted. The hydro e-brake, it's a um, GK Tech reverse mount, but I did modify it. I cut it down at the one inch base mark and we welded a 7071 aluminum rod for tough strength. Mm -hmm. And then a BMX grip and uh, what would, I think it's a 0 0.065 master. Okay. That's awesome, dude. And then it's a, I have a, a to, it's a Amazon brand. It's a, a Toto uh, Android head unit. Okay. So I use it as a head unit, but I also use it as my speedometer. Since it is an Android, I downloaded the speedometer app. <laughs> so if I got to know how fast I'm going, it's there. So they won't get you for the, you were exactly. too fast. Oh, look at this. I mean, I have a dash, sir, <laughs> but I know how fast I was going, please. Uh, speaking of the dash, I mean, this is, pretty cool piece uh, what is it and then just kind of describe everything else so the dash it's a dash cap it's not physically a dash it's a cap that you would put on top of a crack dash so you can make it look nice so it is flimsy here and there but mm -hmm. I didn't make it to be aesthetic pleasing I just wanted something that was updated in a way for mm -hmm. me to have my custom setup gotcha. uh, I do have a ACM backdrop that's literally right there in front of you guys. Mm -hmm. It holds my Link Aim Strata uh, MXS race dash. It's a Vol switch switch panel and a um, glow shift fuel level gauge, which I plan on getting rid of because I just found out that the race dash has the fuel level gauge. <laughs> so <laughs> I got to wire that in. That's cool. And then the steering uh, wheel, which one is so it? So the steering wheel is Street Arrow with a DN, I mean, a NRG quick release. And then it's a, it's a race hub with a 1992 steering column with a custom steering shaft to a 1976 Mustang II wrecking pinion. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> yeah, nightmare if something breaks. And like, That's why I gotta remember everything. And then like somebody else is like, hey, like, I'll go buy a part for you, but like, nah, bro. I'll, uh, I'll just do it myself. <laughs> it's not gonna be good. The whole um, body harness, chassis harness, I've made myself. So nothing in here is factory. So this truck was made to learn off of. It wasn't made to let me see what money could buy. Okay. So anything on this truck, 
I wanted to learn. So paint, fabrication, uh, wiring, anything that had to do with it, I learned on myself on this truck so I could transfer that data and start offering it as a service. Because mm -hmm. I do side jobs, so I either build classics or mm -hmm. fabricate on drift cars. So if I could work on this, learn off my mistakes and make it into a professional thing and offer it as a service, mm -hmm. I'm gonna do it. I don't care if I mess up my truck or not. Right. Like that's the whole process. Like there's no failure. I mean, there's no success without failure. There you go. So I'm not gonna go out there and mess up somebody's truck or a car. If I'm gonna mess something up, it's gonna be my own personal one. Love that, love the mindset, bro. Okay. <clears throat> oh, well. and then just for those 90s, early 2000 kids, we got the five panel wink mirror. <laughs> I saw that, I saw that, man. Those are the best. Come on now, no blind spots. It does start to wiggle after a while and you gotta put something so it doesn't move, but that's Oh, I actually TIG welded my own mount, so guy. this is solid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, it ain't moving. <laughs> oh yeah, you definitely reinforced it. Yeah, mine, mine wiggles a little bit. Well, all this reinforcement and e-brake and everything, man, like for what? Let's check out the, the power plant if you don't mind. Yeah. Um, it's so cool that, you know, the K-series here fits perfectly. I mean, one you see looks pretty nice too. Ah, but, but they're heavier. That's what. That's the reason you want K, right? Oh yeah. You're a Honda boy. No, no, oh, no. Let's maybe, see. Maybe not at heart. Maybe not at heart. Ooh, <laughs> this is better than a K series in this man. It's so rad. I don't know if you can see the motor or not. So let me turn on my light real quick. What a flex! <laughs> what a flex! He has a little switch on. I love that. Wow. Well, it reminds me of the Datsuns. Remember they had a little flashlight on the side? Oh, yeah. The 240s, yeah. That reminds me off of the uh, old Suburbans Tahos. They had that too? The Cheyennes. Oh, okay. okay. So actually, the trucks had them. So I got the idea off of my cousin. He has a Chevy uh, C10. Mm -hmm. And uh, he had this. I'm like, oh, it looks pretty cool. So when I was in the process of painting the whole engine bay, mm -hmm. I'm like, let's Is throw it? it in. Well, let's, man, this is beautiful. What are we looking at, man? Uh, Frankenstein of a mess. <laughs> <laughs> we love it. So this is a 1998 uh, 3SGE Beams. These do not come turbo from factory, mm. but it is the same family as the 2J because they were both built and designed by Yamaha with Toyota. Mm -hmm. So it is the same family. Uh, it's able to handle the boost, but you start getting weak down at the rods as they're skinny and the titanium uh, valves. So you got to be careful if you really trying to go out with them. So the engine is fully built. Uh, it's forged internals, but I'm still running just five PSI for now. Mm -hmm. uh, later on, after my surgery, once I recover, then we're going to go up to 10 to 12 pounds. Which right now I'm making 225. I should be making about 380 to Whoa. 450 once I get this retuned. We have a world speed intake manifold. We have a 2JZ alternator. Uh, I mean, you could tell aesthetically, I try to make everything look nice. Like even the throttle cable, I put wire loom on it. That's cool. Uh, we have an AT power shaftless, uh, 80 millimeter, eight, yeah, eight, I'm sorry, I'm mixing everything up. It's a 80 millimeter shaftless AT power throttle body. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have a Amazon branded catch can, Harper Fuels, FPR, color fittings uh, for every AN fitting. Uh, I'm also use, utilizing their hoses. We have a Turbo Smart, uh, I believe it's a 45 millimeter fifth <coughs> generation wastegate. Uh, we have a screamer pipe just coming out the hood vent. It's a <laughs> Garrett GT 3071R Turbo. And the internal is not actually Garrett. I recently got sponsored by Arashi Dynamic Turbos and the CHRA, which is the centerpiece of the entire turbo, it's from them. And it's a uh, dual ball bearings. It's all V-banded that I welded myself also in the back. Mm -hmm. And they don't come V-banded, but Arashi Dynamics actually offers different housing. So if you wanted to get a turbo from them, they offer any turbo you want with whatever housing exits you want and mountings. Mm -hmm. So that's that. It's a homemade uh, log manifold from a guy named Michael. I don't remember his last name. He builds nothing but log manifolds for three TCs, uh, four AGEs, three SG beams. I mean, whatever comes his way. Mm -hmm. um, 
I would love a top mount later on. That's just what I've always wanted, but I bought that mount, manifold off of him for 200 bucks, so I can't really complain. Wow, it's holding on? Yeah, it's holding on. Mm -hmm. It's all TIG welded with high-end steel. That's cool. Um, I actually upgraded everything to studded. Um, I'm using, uh, I forgot the name, McMaster. I'm using their bolts and nuts because I've gone with everything off of Amazon, eBay. I've gone everything to local stores and the bolts either would back out or just strip. Mm -hmm. So McMaster sells anti-vibration nuts and anti-vibration bolts. Oh, that's a cool tip. So right mm -hmm. I went ahead, studded the whole thing with it. I've never had the turbo come loose ever again, the header, intake, like anything on this build, I haven't had come off. That's a great tip, yeah. Uh, besides that, I used a thousand degree uh, Loctite on the turbo studs. And that too. <laughs> yeah, but it just gives it a little bit more because I mean, if you're off red limit or just drifting, it's gonna get hot. Yeah. So it, even with anti-vibration uh, studs, you just might never know. I've never tested it, mm -hmm. but I wasn't planning to, you don't wanna, yeah. to find out. Yeah, you don't wanna find out. Uh, we yeah, have... <laughs> We have 20 AN uh, coolant lines. We have a Toyota 4Runner aluminum three row uh, radiator. We have a S13 ISR uh, intercooler. Intercooler piping I made myself out of the T304 stainless. I know everybody's gonna say, you're supposed to go aluminum, aluminum. you're supposed to go titanium. I use what I have, mm -hmm. but besides that, I don't know how to weld aluminum. Yeah, mm -hmm. I wanna learn, but I mean, that's for another time. For now, I just wanted to get it up and running. And so I did that out of stainless. Um, what else? My, I did my own engine mounts. It's a Link ECU with, it's a Link ECU uh, G4X Monsoon with a- Oh wow, fancy. I mean, it's the base model of their whole lineup. <laughs> Still though, fancy though, bro. <laughs> Don't minimize it. Uh -huh. um, but it's more than enough to run this motor. Mm -hmm. um, let's see what else. We have their whole link uh, flex fuel uh, sensors. Any any sensors on this, it's basically link except the intake temps and the coolant temps. That's off of a GM. Um, fuel. Huh? Are you on pump uh, fuel right now? So Is right now, flex? right now I'm on E85. Oh, nice. So I have the option of E85 or 91, but mm -hmm. uh, so before I would do E85, 91, but then I would, I don't know if it's just a California thing, but every six months, my injectors would gunk up because mm -hmm. of the E85. So I would constantly take them to RC injection and get them either rebuilt or cleaned. And every time it was like 80, 120, I'm like, it's starting to get expensive. Really? So oh. me being me, I found out how to rebuild them and well, now I run E85 all the time because I have all the I have the machines. <laughs> I have the knowledge the to yeah, clean them, rebuild them. Um, so it's not a hard thing. If anybody wants to learn, you can literally look up on YouTube, and there's people out there that know and are willing to share the knowledge. It's not that hard. Um, what else? So internals, basically, it's all ACL bearings. Mm -hmm. I have Eagle. Eagle rods, they're stock pistons. They're stock pistons. I believe they can handle six, 700 horsepower. So I didn't find a reason for me to change the pistons. Mm -hmm. uh, stock head gasket, I have Kelford uh, cam or the valve springs and retainers. And that's, ba uh, I have custom shims just for the valve lash. Uh, the only tricky part was those, uh, little spacers or the valve. I can't, why can I not think of this? Um, I can't think of the name right now. Oh, the valve shims, there we go. I had to order them directly from Australia, custom made because I couldn't find one that was made specifically for the size that I needed. Mm. But I changed them from the unique size that 3SJ Beams has to a 2JZ size. Wow. So if I need one local, I can, but due to the valve lash and everything, I had to get custom ones made. And you did it all yourself? No, so engine work, I got it done by a local oh, okay, machine okay, shop. Cool. Gotcha. Um, mm -hmm. I could, like me personally, I could rebuild the motor or whatever, but 
due to the fact that he had to machine it and that's do a different head work, yeah. I can't do that. I don't have the machine work, nor the knowledge. But so. he's looking at YouTube videos already. <laughs> <laughs> I did, honestly, I did, but... You're like, nah. Nah, I'm good. good. Yeah, because one mistake, one uh, millimeter of millimeters will yeah, cause so, damage, yeah. Um, we have a uh, Amazon branded oil cooler for the cooling system due to the turbo now. Mm -hmm. um, Amazon, so this is the one that caught me off guard. This is a real carbon fiber piece. Oh, wow. But it was from Amazon. Interesting. And it was from Amazon Warehouse. Like, it wasn't a third party. It wasn't nothing There's like that. There's a like, dude out there that likes cars. He's like, nah, bro, trust <laughs> me. There's a guy with the Hilux. He's going <laughs> to benefit from this. <laughs> uh, so the truck is also sponsored by Filter Wars. So I have the filter cover so no rain gets into the motor. It's hydrophobic. Uh, we have a Chase Base IS300 uh, brake booster delete, which is a bolt-on. What? So <laughs> you could use a IS300 booster, flip it 180 degrees, and bam, the, bam, it's done. You'll, you'll have the vacuum port at the same location as the truck where it's supposed to. But I had the booster, but I don't know if it was just the exhaust or what, but like at the time I wasn't thinking. I wasn't thinking about, all right, let me make a heat <laughs> I shield. Think, I don't think we've been thinking for a long time, bro. <laughs> and by the way, continue to not stop thinking. This is badass. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so I didn't think about making a heat shield. I just kept on thinking about like, what can I buy to make it better, this and that. So <laughs> just delete it. <laughs> yeah, so somebody was like, having manual brakes is not that bad. So I'm like, all right, let's give it a shot. So I put it on. Don't listen to the internet, kid. <laughs> so I had the original uh, calipers on here. Mm -hmm. Oh, it was a shit show. I was. It, it was hard to break. Like, I still loved it for drifting because it was easy to let for a break without completely, yeah. like, bouncing forward or locking up. But manual brakes now is so much easier to let for a break. Um, it's the factory... Um, Toyota Clutch Master, they're both tucked into the cow. That's why I don't have any calipers. I mean, calipers. I don't have any windshield wipers. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, even then, I don't really like to drive this in the rain. As, I don't think you should, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what else? Custom steering shaft by Staff, Staff Fab. Uh, the rack and pinion mount is from Stab, Stab Fab as well. Mm -hmm. uh, rack and pinion is the 1972 Mustang 2. The outer tie rods are from Staff App also. Uh, what else? So much, dude. I love the lines that you did for the coolant and everything. Thank you. That was actually something I've always wanted because I went to a show when I was young mm -hmm. and I saw cars have these, but back then it was a hot rods with the blue and red mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. coolant lines. Um, Front end is cut. I made a removable front end core so I could just pull everything in and out. So I made everything serviceable when I do fabrication. Mm -hmm. So if I unbolt it from here and here, the whole radiator, oil cooler, and the, the I mean, inner cooler, oil cooler, radiator all come out together. That's freaking smart. So anything I've done on this is basically to have the ability to service it at the track. Very smart. Very smart from your end. Yeah. Wow. Well, catch your breath, bro. <laughs> that was like 12 minutes of you just nonstop talking. Like, your lungs are like, hey, man, <laughs> relax. That's cool, man. I really like that. Um, thank you for walking us through the entire process. And there's a million other things that you're forgetting. I mean, I mean, one thing I would say is paint, it's not the best, but this is the first time I learned how to paint. But thanks to my neighbor that he is a painter, he taught me how to paint and how to throw flake on my first paint job. So hey, all that's this, great. All this was my first paint job ever. So if you see flakes here and there, especially like right here, it's coming off. I didn't prep it right. So all of that's gonna get redone, not sh probably in the summer, but. The fact that you painted that, like, you know? <laughs> like, why don't? But I get it, I get it, I get so it. So everything, everything here has been painted, the braking system, the suspension, everything. Like The arms, everything. Yeah, yeah I didn't let anything go. Especially because my best friend was, him being him, he's also like me, where, OCD, we like making everything look dope, nice. Dope. He likes spending top end money to make his 350Z look like the shit with the best product. Uh -huh. Like it still, it still looks like a, I wouldn't say daily driver, it's slammed on three piece wheels, but like, I don't know, he put me to it. He's like, 
it looks like shit. <laughs> like, All right. like if you're if you're going this out on, on the build, building the motor, you have the whole front end apart. Why not just paint it? I'm like, well, Bam. then I gotta paint the whole truck. He's like, nah, just paint the engine bay. I'm like, all right, screw it. So I painted the engine bay and one is, it, I forgot what it's called, but it's oh, a snowball effect, I think. Mm -hmm. It's like one thing after another. Oh, yeah, I'm so like, it's getting bigger, yeah. Uh, so I'm like, I'm looking at the chassis. I'm like, damn, it looks like crap. So I painted it. Damn, suspension and braking system look like crap. Let me paint it. So little by little, everything started accumulating. Here we are. Yeah. Wow, amazing job, dude. Seriously, amazing, thank you, thank amazing you. job. Seriously. Oh yeah, these are not factory either. These are off of a 2014 uh, Foreigner, the mounts. <laughs> so cool. I just made it work. <laughs> I love it, dude. Amazing job, dude. Seriously. <laughs> You're like a pick right over here. I'm not that extreme. <laughs> like I know how to drift here and there, but the simple fact where it comes down to starting second, hitting it, throwing it into third, yeah, transferring a set of cores into real life, it's two different things. A thousand percent. But damn, what lights? And lights. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, what are we looking at? Holy crap, dude! Yeah, so this is a 1990, no, 1989 S13 240SX rear end with Voodoo 13 titanium arms, uh, cantilever suspension, Infinity J30 axles, uh, <laughs> custom drive shaft, SAE speed coilers with cantilever uh, style suspension. Uh, I did my own custom axle spacers. Uh, so the dual caliper setup, they pull the axles out a little bit. Uh, custom braking system that I'm not proud of. I gotta redo it. Uh, <laughs> in the corner, we have the Volvo power steering pump and next to it is the oil cooler. Mm. And then we have a sure. Optima uh, battery and a 15, I believe, or 17 gallon uh, Jags fuel cell with a Walbro Hellcat 525. LPH uh, fuel pump. Uh, what else? Custom tube rear end. Uh, made my own lighting. Uh, and I think, I believe that's it. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm sure no, but what kind of diff do you said? It's a uh, S13. 13? And that one's stock? Uh, stock, welded. Uh, really? Stock? So it's stock and it's crap. Well, that's what I'm wondering. <laughs> I'm like, the fact that it has been able to handle all of this, a stock? Wow, okay. So this is my second diff. I, the original one I had was a VLSD and second clutch kick, it went out. <laughs> um, so one thing I would say is the welds, are, they're, they're not pretty to look at. Um, but they're this, efficient. This was my first, first, fabrication project mm -hmm. welding also so i mean this is one of the reasons why this truck got a bad rep but i will be cutting the whole rear end off like i've talked about it online i'm not scared to show my mistakes like mm -hmm. mistakes are gonna happen here or there people love to just hide them but i mean we're human 
everybody's gonna mess up. So, well, this, if you're trying, you're gonna mess up. If you're not, yeah. you can just sit on the sideline and not do anything. So th that's where that saying comes in. There's no success without failure, and there's no failure if you don't have the guts to actually do and chase what you're after. Facts. And by the way, you have two chairs here, so it is a truck. Like it is usable. <laughs> just this. That's it. That's it. That's all I got. You are using. But the even bed. then, even then, I gotta have it strapped down. It's either that, or the diff is just gonna fling it out to the car behind me. <laughs> Hey man, this is so freaking cool. Like, so, one thing I know if any of the SoCal peeps are watching, if you ever see my bed twerking, <laughs> this is the reason why. I cut all the supports out, which I was never supposed to do. So, if you see me behind, you're gonna see this. This yeah. is not the chassis, this is just the, the bed flexing. That's it. So, I got this checked by many, many fabricators. My homeboy that's my best friend that's a weld inspector for the oil refineries, they all checked it out. They all said there was penetration, so all the welds are solid. Okay. They just don't look the best. <laughs> like physically, they're not, they're not pleasing. But they did say it's gonna hold it's, and it's gonna take the abuse, so I shouldn't have to worry. But again, my OCD comes in, Nothing is symmetrical, nothing is like, yeah. It, nothing look, even though it's aligned and everything is in the <laughs> position where it's supposed to be. It doesn't look like it. It doesn't look like it. So <laughs> I gotta fix stuff here and there, but what I'm also planning on doing is boxing the rear end. That oh, way nice. I could I could throw the original uh, bed supports back in, weld, them, weld some new ones in, or just skin the whole bed. But two, three years, I get myself to collect all the metal and just redo the whole back end. Wow. A little bit better. And one project I'm gonna have this summer is I got a 350Z diff that I have to cut the subframe and fabricate new mounts for it. <laughs> so the reason for that is, um, this one is a 408 gearing. The one I'm gonna go to is a 3.3 from okay. an auto 350Z. Mm -hmm. So my RPM should go down by three or 4,000 RPM. Uh, gas mileage i mean i'm not saying i need the gas mileage but Come like on. i'm gonna get it for long trips mm -hmm. i'm gonna have the rpm and the speed for when i do long trips the uh, six gear right now i'm going 75 i'm at like 39 four grand <laughs> rpm so and not only that the the maintenance of it if it does break you can go get another one or if you can upgrade some it's just having more modern uh parts into the car it just helps yeah, yeah and one thing i learned from my a uh, drivetrain person that made me the drive shaft. Mm -hmm. Drive shafts are not supposed to spin more than 6,200 RPM, I believe. And because of the gearing that I have, the diff plus the trans, mm -hmm. I'm spinning at 72, 7,500 oh, RPM. Shoot. So it causes a vibration at high speeds. Gotcha. So drive shafts are not supposed to have it. They will cause a vibration even though they're straight and solid. They're That's not good. supposed to spin at that speed. So. Gotcha. At 75 or anything past 75, I have a small vibration, but after like 85, it goes away. So he did like, we checked everything. He checked the angles. He checked literally everything, axles, dry shaft angle. And he's like, it's overspinning the dry shaft. So once I go to the 3.3 diff, all my problems should be solved. Should I should have the down. speed. Mm -hmm. And well, at that time I should have the power also to put down. <laughs> It's like a yeah, snowball effect. That's cool. Yeah. And then one thing I didn't point out is 350Z side, side splitters. Oh, nice. All I did was cut them you to cut length them? on the length. Okay. As a width, it's fine. Just the length is, it overshot, shoots it by like, I think six, seven inches. Man, dope. And I believe that's it. I don't think I have anything else. Wheel and tire setup. Uh, wheels, mm -hmm. it's 15 by 10 plus 25 in the rear. Mm -hmm. And the front is 15 by 10, negative 25 Oof. with a 20 mil spacer. So I used to be negative 44. <laughs> but um, I wanted to change the wheels. <clears throat> and these are the only ones. As I'm a star fanatic. Mm -hmm. Any wheels I get has to be a star, five spoke. So I had the Steelys, the Kregers, the V5s. They're five spoke, 15 by 10, negative 44. But when I wanted to change the wheel says when I did the whole rear end, well, the rear end is a foot wider than the original setup. <laughs> so I problem. had to get new wheels. 
and this is the only wheel that would fit. So I was like, all right, let's throw it to the front. But then the front was too skinny, so I threw the 20 mil spacer, and this was before the BBK. So, hi Jordan, thank you so much for making the time. Dude, seriously, this truck is just, ah, it's one of a kind, man. And I'm so glad that uh, it's still going. I'm so glad that it's still not uh, finished, that it, you're still perfectioning it. Uh, I love that, dude. Like, keep at it. I know you're your biggest uh, critic, and you know, you, obviously you see flaws with the car, but to me, it's perfectly imperfect. And that's, to me, that's that's what it is, man. So, thank you. Any shout outs, bro? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, sponsor list is basically filter wares, color fittings, uh, well speed, AT power, dapper lighting, R1 uh, concepts, performance fuel injection. We also have Arashi Dynamics turbos and my newest sponsor, JC uh, Tent LA. Man, so definitely got a lot of support behind you, so that's really cool to see. And I mean, there's definitely support behind us. I definitely have a lot more people to thank. But I mean, the list goes on and on mm -hmm. with the amount of people that help me with the knowledge with, I mean, there's just too many people to thank to even list. But I mean, the people watching this, watching this know who I'm talking about. So if you had anything to deal with the truck, I appreciate you support, like all look towards you. And I wish you guys the best. Is that your version of heating up the tires? Yeah. <laughs>